Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, federal government seeks increased support for anti-corruption bodies across Africa as Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoyinka recommends arrest of corrupt leaders to make anti-graft fights effective. Security operatives take over Kano State House of Assembly complex as majority of lawmakers move to impeach the speaker over alleged incompetence and corruption. Some members of the new PDP bloc in the All Progressives Congress deny claims of marginalization of the group in the APC, say allegations by the Baraje led group. And over 50 killed at the Israel Gaza border as violence intensifies following US sighting of its embassy in Jerusalem. On business news tonight, Miners Association of Nigeria seeks federal government's intervention in tackling illegal mining activities to boost revenue generation from the sector. On sports news, the Super Eagles technical advisor Gernot Roll releases a 30-man provisional squad list for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in June. And from Abuja, Nigeria's Minister of Health challenges the public on the urgent need to scale up immunization in the country at the ongoing African Vaccination Week in Abuja. We begin tonight with a call on African leaders to provide more support and resources to anti-corruption agencies in their countries to boost the fight against corruption. Nigeria's Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo made the call at the opening of a four-day conference of heads of anti-corruption agencies from across Africa in Abuja today. The Conference for Commonwealth Members in Africa is coming a month after the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra reports. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Vice President Yemil Shibajo, in company of three former presidents, Nigerian Chief Justice, Nigeria's Nobel Laureate and the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. At the other end of the room are heads of anti-corruption agencies from countries who are members of the Commonwealth. Of concern to all of them is the estimated $148 billion taken away from Africa illegally. The institutions of state dedicated to fighting corruption will be given... At this conference, the eighth in this series, their goal is to work together to recover and return the stolen money. Vice President Oshibajo declared the conference open on behalf of President Buhari. It is only through collective action that we can stay ahead of the criminal enemies who rob our countries and our citizens of their present and their future. Welcome you. Two of Nigeria's former leaders in their separate remarks expressed concern at the level of corruption in Africa. <laughs> Commonwealth Secretary General explains the scale of the problem that she describes as ravenous storm. The difference between the money we need to deliver the hopes and aspirations contained in our Commonwealth Charter of 2013 and the commitments we all made when we signed up to the UN SDGs in 2015. And the money we have is the sum equivalent to that which is egregiously siphoned off by the corrupt practices of the greedy, the uncaring, and the pernicious few. Participants talk about their expectations. I expect them to bring out a communique that is binding on all African leaders. We we'll come up with some ideas as to how we we'll go about recovering assets and returning back, uh, them back to the respective uh, states where they were actually stolen. In the four days of this conference, the ideas and expertise that will be shared would majorly revolve around assets recovery and return, and recommendations therefrom are expected to help the continent, particularly Nigeria, repatriate billions of naira reportedly stashed in foreign lands. In Abuja, Ibrahim Adra for Channels Television News. Meanwhile, Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoyinka believes Nigeria's anti-corruption fight will not be won until corrupt leaders are jailed. 
Professor Shrinka was also speaking at the conference of heads of anti-corruption agencies in Africa holding in Abuja, the federal capital. Yesterday to visit the headquarters of EFCC, I wanted to see what will be the mode of hospitality for some of our leaders who will surely sooner or later pass through the doors of that beautiful building not far from here. Uh, I think that until, I'm not a vengeful person, but I think until we make sure that some of our leaders pass through those doors, the struggle against corruption in this country will not be won, will not be over. And so I spoke to Magu, I said, I want to see. I said, I want to see where's the presidential wing in this place. I said, I'm a human rights person, I want to make sure that you treat them right when they come here. And he said, sorry, it's an egalitarian institution. And I said, okay, I'll take that message back to them. And they should get ready to go down a little bit in status when the time comes and justice catches up with them. Away from corruption matters to issues in the legislature, 21 members of the Kano State House of Assembly who signed an impeachment notice against the Speaker of the House, Abdullahi Atta, have confirmed that they will meet at the Assembly complex tomorrow to complete the impeachment process. The spokesperson of the 21-man committee, Bafa Baba, says the lawmakers are worried about the Speaker's inability to discharge his duties effectively. Meanwhile, security has been tightened around the assembly complex to prevent a breakdown of law and order. Our correspondent Idris Jibrin reports. Armed police officers guarding the Kano State House of Assembly complex following an intelligence report on anticipated breakdown of law and order arising from a move by some of the lawmakers to impeach the speaker, Abdullahi Atta. As I'm talking to you, we have different elected one power. You know how to have somebody is adjacent to the Kano State Secretariat. So the normal activities of Kano State Government and Civil Service is ongoing. And so also anybody that has an access to the House of Assembly is ongoing. But we make sure that no any breach of peace has been taking place there. Throughout the day, there was no sitting of the lawmakers in the House. But some members who have signed impeachment notice on the speaker insist that their intention is to clean the house of corruption, incompetence and other related issues. And we decide to impeach the speaker because of incompetency, corruption, uh, lack of coming to the house on time, lack of taking along all the members of the state house of assembly. These are the four main cardinal reasons and other reasons, but these are the four main reasons why we want to impeach the speaker. Uh, tomorrow, inshallah, we'll continue the struggle, continue, and uh, um, we're assuring uh, uh, people of countries that we are going to come up with much critical leadership. But other group of the House members seems not to be in agreement with the members moving for the impeachment of the speaker. There's no impeachment exercise now. There's no move for impeachment in the Kansas House of Assembly. And all the principal offices are, are still there. Everybody is, is still in his office. What do you think will happen? The, the house has been closed for Ramadan pasting, a period. You understand? Even, without, even before this conflict, the house was intended to be closed today. Although the allegations against Kano State Assembly Speaker were not before any court of law, 21 lawmakers by simple majority have already voted out all principal officers loyal to the Speaker. Now who wins and who loses? Who is right and who is wrong may likely be determined by tomorrow. And as the drama keeps unfolding, with all these armed security operatives, we will keep updating you on the situation at the Kano State Legislative Arm. Idris Jubrin, Channel Television News. The lawmaker representing Delta Central in the Senate, Senator Uvi Omagagi, has vowed to resume plenary when the Senate reconvenes tomorrow in line with the judgment of a federal high court which overturned his suspension by the Senate. Senator Omar Agege says the appeal filed by the leadership of the Senate will not stop him from resuming his legislative duties as the same Senate suspended him while his suit against the Senate was pending before the court. 
Senator Omar Gege insists that the order of the Federal High Court nullifying his suspension is a declaratory judgment which cannot be arrested by an appeal. Why I should not show up tomorrow? Uh, if I decide to show up tomorrow, you'll be there. But that would be on advice of counsel. But yes, uh, uh, more likely than not, I'll be in the Senate tomorrow. I'm also aware that uh, uh, they've gone ahead to file uh, an application for stay of the judgment. Uh, but that, as you know, is an equitable relief. And if you understand uh, the predicate of that judgment, that judgment was not given to me uh, on the merits. It was given to me uh, on the understanding that my action was pending in court, known to the Senate and known to the Senate President, but notwithstanding that knowledge, he proceeded to purportedly suspend me. To party politics, a group of politicians from the defunct new PDP have distanced themselves from claims of marginalization and maltreatment, allegedly by some aggrieved members of the All Progressives Congress, who also pulled out of the PDP. In a letter to the national chairman of the APC, the president and other leaders of the party, the group headed by Senator Abdullahi Adamu, says all the allegations by the Kau Baraje group of the new PDP are full of contradictions, false assertions and distortion of the facts. Another member of the group, Honorable Abdul Mumin Jibrin, explains that there is no iota of truth in the claims by the Baraje group. Some weeks ago, one or two weeks ago, some colleagues, brothers of ours in the defunct NPDP came to the national headquarters of our great party and gave a presentation to the national chairman of our great party to the effect that the government and party was beginning to not only intimidate their membership, They've not been getting patronage as they had wished to have, and uh, they were being languished the back yard of the mainstream, you know, APC in government. We have come to make it absolutely clear to associate, to disassociate the new PDP membership with the letter in which. The party, APC, and the, the, the government under uh, President Mohamed Buhari is being, you know, uh, uh, blamed and accused in so many ways. Uh, we disassociate ourselves completely. We, we are members of the defunct. When it was in existence, we are members. We are not, there was no consultation whatsoever. There was no meeting anywhere. Even we say that's a meeting, let him bring to you here. You know, if, where the meeting held, who attended, and the minutes. Okay. Well, there you have the police dispersing protesting Shiite members from the premises of the Federal Secretariat in Abuja. The youths who were armed with stones had stormed the complex and chased away the police team stationed there and overturned the traffic warden cabin. They also took over major roads around the area, just a few meters away from the National Assembly complex, chanting free El Zakzaki. When the Federal Secretariat Divisional Police Officer appealed to the protesters to stop harassing motorists, he was reportedly injured in the face. A detachment of police reinforcements then arrived the scene and dispersed the angry youths with tear gas. In part two, after the break, High Court sitting in Joss fixes Wednesday, May the 16th, for the arraignment of former Plateau State Governor Jonah Dang for alleged financial misappropriation. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs>